My Nigeria is filled with beautiful things as well as some things that may be perceived as ugly. It is a land with potential. My name is Diola Sego. This is my Nigeria. Okay, where is the, the one that um, Kwon was doing? Push it back and let it lean back. I think it's too stuck. I think you need to put a line, like the line, yes, yes, exactly. They, they get me so well. So already she knows exactly. Yes. This is Tenny Sego. She's the creative designer. Um, for the clan label under the house of Diola Sego. And she also happens to be my daughter, my first daughter. Wow. Welcome back, AP. I'm eager to hear about what transpired. London was good, you know, Savile Row. The fact that we have an opportunity to establish a platform on what is pretty much the premier bespoke uh, platform for menswear in the UK, i.e. you hear Savile Row, you think to yourself, top draw. It's not just getting a Nigerian brand on Savile Row, it's getting the first female brand on Savile Row. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, 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 they are prepared to actually have Deola from Deola Sego mm -hmm. on wow. Savile Row on the window. So that's... Um, and that's a nice one. Mm -hmm. And Teddy, uh, excellent things for, for Clan too. Savile Row is prepared to look at both. The difference between Clan and Diola Sego is that Clan is a ready-to-wear line. You, you should be able to buy it off the racks. With Diola Sego, it's bespoke. She does exquisite pieces, They're very detailed and very glamorous. I mean, the few Diola things I own, I am so proud when I wear them. With what Diola has done over the years in terms of um, design, Clan came in breaking down that design and making those designs available in a much more diffused form. This means that we can have the advantage of commercializing whilst at the same time reaping the rewards of our bespoke clothing. We want to make more scarves so that people can tie this. It's very African because Africans tend to want to wrap their hair and it's, it's also a way of just, you know, injecting a burst of color into your outfit. <laughs> It's exciting working with her because she always has all these crazy ideas and they come through in the clothes. But what I try to do is sort of rein her in so that we can rein in a certain um, target market because that's really all this is about. Really. Yeah, we, we haven't really actually sat down to, to think about it like that, that wow, um, what does she think about me as her working partner? <laughs> Um, it's, yeah, but the, the thing is that um, we complement each other so well. Um, she and her sisters have breathed new life into the business because if there is going to be longevity, the young 
have to come in and revive things and turn things around. Do that. Woo. Okay, so don't you, it's a beautiful skirt. Don't you think that it's a, the slit is a little bit high? I, I find um, um, there's a symbiotic relationship between both Clan and Deola. I think that it's very healthy. Tenny is disciplined by her mother's knowledge and Deola is, I believe, freed and inspired by Tenny's um, uh, contemporary, you know. We met uh, several years ago uh, when she had a legal matter. Last year was the first time I've ever been to a fashion show in my life. Uh, in another life, she wanted to be a model. You can see that. Um. <laughs> so you see the slope, but then when you walk it and walk fast, wow, it's a fantastic walkout. This was the area in which the colonial masters lived in Nigeria. This is where old money resides, but now the nouveau riche have, um, are taking over. <laughs> you can see that in the new buildings and apartments that, are, that keep rising up every day. Look at them. Good morning. That's Kate, my housekeeper. <laughs> so, uh, this is my home. Welcome to my home. We tend to be very bad with mornings. Walk drags on until so late and then we're in bed and then I usually have to go and wake up. You're still in bed. We have meetings and then she jumps, jumps up and then she tries to get to the office ahead of me. Oh, I think I already have a client waiting for me. Okay, must be a huge client because there's a, there's a, Policeman there with a with a gun. We always say no. Stay outside with your gun, please. Somebody else has taken that. And actually, I think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even I am surprised at what I've ended up doing because it was not even in my plan. It wasn't on the cards for me at all. Let me go on my mannequin quickly and just drape this. Okay. I studied business administration and got a degree from the University of Miami in Florida. However, I was very much drawn towards the arts. The plan that my parents had was to give their children the very best of um, education um, so that the, the children would come back to enrich um, the business uh, and therefore through that enrich the nation. Most um, um, parents who send their children um, abroad to go and study. That's really what is at the back of their minds because um, most of those parents have businesses, um, they're in the private sector, and um, the children obviously have to come and take over the, the businesses so that they can last long into the future. Yo, uh, Kalanjo, 
case, in case to bad. I worked like mad. So I was able to sell 40 cars within four weeks. I quickly calculated my expected commission. And to, to my greatest surprise, what I was due to earn was more than my one year salary. So I left, started my business on the 1st of August, 1971. You can see how many Toyotas on the road. Um, it, it isn't a bad business at all. at all. My father said, this is what you were trained for, to come into the family business. So I looked at him and I thought, I just don't want to do this. My father said to me, can you compare how much you would be making if you sold one car compared to selling one dress? If that's what you want to do, you have to fend for yourself. I'm not going to get involved with this your tailor thing. <laughs> we sort of had to part ways where I had to go and find my own purpose. It's part of our culture to, to look our very, very best for, for a special occasion. And we have many of such occasions um, um, here. There's always a wedding, always a, a birthday party, a celebration of, of some sort. And for that, people will spend money to look very good for that one, um, for that one occasion. So um, that's the way it's always been. Even with the, the hand-woven fabrics that are my favorite, um, they're actually called ashoke, which literally translates to top drawer clothing because they're all handmade, made on the looms, and they're uh, fabrics of great antiquity. So even in those days, they were special. You can imagine what it's gonna look like when everything is cut to fit, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is how we, this is how we do it, baby. <laughs> yeah, so, especially when I'm alone, I, it's what I call the taming fabric, yeah. I go out into the, the, into the villages um, to source for fabrics that are authentic African fabrics. Uh, these handwoven fabrics date back to the 11th century and are still woven on those same looms that were used in the 11th century. We've cut it out and made it to look like lace. Um, as I was growing up as a kid, um, I saw that our traditional clothing or styles were always made out of lace. And for the longest of times, I thought that lace was authentic African fabric. Uh, to my greatest shock, I discovered that these were actually Swiss products. And I thought, but we must be able to produce our own lace since we love the fabric so much and um, um, we wear them traditionally. I am going to try to, to make a lace that is African from the beginning till the end. We're going to Oshogo, which is in Oshun State. Um, this place is known 
for the tie-dye techniques and the, the batik techniques that date back um, centuries ago. So this is the person who does all my tie-dye. Everything you see on the catwalk, they do it here. This is ethnic fashion. This is what the world is looking for. The world is looking for a difference. People want to be able to feel as if they're part of a story. I think what he's doing is that he's applying the resist, yes, the, the candle wax, yeah, exactly. The color and the pattern. Yes. To Over bring the, the, the pattern out. has been a tradition that has been with us, the Africans. Although most people believe it comes from the Western world, but I'm of the contrary opinion, because I have been into it for a very long time, and uh, my parents, they are into it even before the arrival of the Western people into uh, Africa as a whole. But then we were not using wax, we were using raffia to tie the area that we does not want the color to penetrate into. Okay, design wire. Mm. So, at she, when the flower is much thicker, at the dairy. Okay. Ele, you shouldn't look dark. When the flower is much thicker, it's much more dark. So the loafer. Okay. Masi ya si ya to sele to fumi. So, di moje dairy le moje wa dairy mo ari po ya to. But Baba, you go eh, you go here get dye now. What the thing? No, we can't shave the same. Thing by thing, but the mother tell me go more, go more. We, me or you, we go can't shave the fabric now. Fabric, eh, eh, for what? Eh, what the So the way don't you marry yato? I wrote him of the dye lay. Go here, get him of my dye lay. Go to bed. My storekeeper gave him the wrong fabric. This fabric, this is the, this is the original. And once there's a little change, then it's going to it's going to render things differently. She's called Naya, which means flowing water. Wow. And that's it cascading down. Water. It's very nice. Slits a bit long for me, but. but um... <laughs> you see, you and I seem to have a problem with the slits. Do you think, think that problem yeah. is a function of our age? Uh, well, 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 you speak for yourself. Uh, all right, okay. Um... We're in different generations. <laughs> Tomorrow the secret sale starts, so we are putting the store in order, which means looking at stock, repricing everything, and making sure that everything's um, ready for our clients. We sent all the invites out, so that's fine. We need to get more security, champagne glasses. Uh, there's just so much that goes into all this stuff, so I, when I was younger, I, I mean, I just didn't realize that, but it was definitely exciting. I used to help out backstage, um, help dress the models, help pick what hair, what makeup, what shoes. Those are the kinds of things that uh, I was interested in. And sometimes, occasionally, maybe I might go out and take a bar with her. I didn't think any of the children was going to be interested in doing this. Tenny graduated with a law degree from the University of Exeter, but I had all along noticed her natural flair and talent for colors, for putting things together. One summer, I came back home to Lagos and I'd seen a top I liked in Topshop. And I thought, you know, why can't I do something similar to this in, you know, Ankara? We were sneaking this into production. My mom didn't know about this. My sister loved it so much. She said, let's make more. Let's actually make a collection. Um, and we decided to give it a name, call it Clan. It was a summer venture and it became something bigger. Okay. 
in the next 10 years, where are you projecting Clan to be? Um, in the next 10 years, I expect Clan to be a global brand. What inspired this? It's a daytime dress. You can wear it to a picnic, the beach, or to a garden party. Okay, I like this. Is that how it is? No, that's good. The one time I went shopping with her, it was like. Definitely this color. Well, you need a size 6 skirt. Coping in this kind of stressful environment is, uh, is quite a feat. <laughs> Going through the traffic to work, and the power gets cut. Um, transportation problems, you know, your staff have to come from quite far in traffic. They get stressed. You get stressed because they don't get to, to work early enough. You know, and once that happens, it's like there aren't as many hours in the day as you would like. It makes me feel that much more fulfilled when I achieve um, all that I achieve. Um, gosh, do you know that it seems like I have actually lost my way? <laughs> Are you yeah, no, because I passed everything and I had to come into a ballet day to come and turn round. You know, so now I'm, oh God, before they go and catch me, before the police catch me on the phone. When I started to be recognized for this clothing, Africa just wasn't there, wasn't being represented at all on the world stage in terms of fashion. Again, and what? And two. Now try doing it with me at the mirror, not down there. I had all the odds pretty much stacked against me, but um, I didn't see that. Being a Nigerian was no limitation for me because I just thought, well, you haven't seen me and there's loads more like me. I slowly but surely made my mark. When I won the Africa Designs competition and things and Africans went to the New York Fashion Week and showed like that for the first time in history. My father came and he actually gave interviews and they asked him, so how do you feel having such a talented daughter? And he said, honestly, I never encouraged her. I said she was wasting her time. I didn't know this was her calling. Today, Nigeria fashion is on the high streets of Milan, New York, or London, and South Africa. One of the living lights, Mrs. Zelda Singh. And of course, a truly proud father, she had a daughter, Elizabeth, who is now one of the greatest investors in Nigeria. Thank you so very much for this. Thank you for convincing my father that this is the way to do it. Yeah. Thank you very much.